Furry Virtual Reality, the beautiful game where you can be your persona self at all times, hang with furry friends in a virtual existence and have a jolly good time despite the horrible circumstances currently making you unable to go outside. I want to start off quick by mentioning, when I say furry virtual reality, I really mean the game VRChat played with a VR headset on. VRChat is a free to play game on Steam that can run on almost any computer. You don't need a VR headset to be able to play VRChat, but what makes the game special is obviously the full experience you get by strapping on a headset, entering the virtual world and being able to move around as your very own persona. Today I'm here to tell you how you can join the world of furry VR. I've seen ridiculous comments saying you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in order to be able to play, but this simply isn't true. The VR equipment I used to make this video for example only cost me $300, and if you buy something like an Oculus Quest headset, you won't even need a decent computer in order to play VR. Just like it is when getting a fursuit, there is a cheap way to do it and a gradually increasing price tag for how much you want to get out of it. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin with part 1. Equipment. For a full-on furry VR experience, I would recommend a VR-ready computer, a VR headset, and a set amount of space where you can move. Again, you don't need all these things, but that's what I would recommend. Space! How much do you need? The more space you have, the better. However, this doesn't mean you need a whole room dedicated to VR. I myself use the same room I sleep and work in, so... So if you already have a gamer space, then you probably have the space to play VR as well. All you really need to do is be able to stand up and sit down, and yes, you can also play VR chat while sitting down in a chair or lying down in a bed. I, I do that quite a lot. The headset. There are plenty of VR headsets already out on the market, in addition to the market always updating. I myself used the original Vive headset. I bought it used and it was quite cheap. Some other options you might go for when it comes to the headset might be the Valve Index, the Rift S or the Oculus Quest. These are the main champions as of making this video right now. I do recommend though checking out if there's something new out there if you are watching this video at a later point, because as said, the VR headset market is always updating and there's coming some new stuff fairly soon, so be, out, be on the lookout for that. It's also important to note that some so-called VR headsets out there will not work with VR chat. It's important to look into what you're buying, as just buying the cheapest thing you can find with the name VR attached to it might not really work. So, now that we've gotten the headset out of the way, let's move over to step 3, full body tracking. The final thing I want to recommend for furry VR is full body tracking. This isn't something you need to play VR and it's definitely luxury equipment, but it's very fun if you have the opportunity and budget for it. And I'll explain why. Full body tracking is the thing that lets you, you guessed it, move your full body instead of just your head and arms. To show the difference, here's what you can do with only a headset. Ooh, yeah, look at me dance. Oh yeah, I can dance, cause I'm super cool. Woohoo, I am so cool. Oh yeah. As you can see, you're fully able to move around, but you don't move your feet manually. They're moving all on their own. Full body tracking, on the other hand, lets you move your entire body, so you can lay down jump up and commit horrible horrible acts of uvu. As you can see I can move my legs however I want, I can move my hips however I want, I can do whatever I want to do with my entire bodily function, which is pretty epic. There are currently two main ways of getting full body tracking that I know of. The first best and most expensive option is by getting vibe trackers. You need three of them that you strap onto your body, both of your feet and your waist, and you need two base stations that track where they are in the room. And there you go, you can now move your entire body. The other way you can get full body tracking is by hooking up an Xbox Kinect, and by the powers of magic and wisdom, you will now be able to move your full body almost like the wire trackers. It's important to mention that the tracking you get with the Kinect is nowhere near as good as you get with the wire trackers, and lying down may be a bit more difficult as well, but it's still possible. And, and that's that's what I, that's what's important, I guess. Please also note that this all takes some technical skills, and you might have to Google some stuff to get everything to work, so I would highly suggest looking into it before buying it. So as you can see, there are many different price points for getting into the virtual world. It's all up to what you want to get out of it and what your budget is. If you don't have much money at all, it might be a good idea to just play the game in desktop mode at first, because again, you don't need a VR headset to be able to play it, it's just very, very, very highly recommended. Part 2, VR chat and how to play it. Okay, so you got the setup, you got the willpower, and you are ready to jump into the world of furry virtual reality. But as you log on, you realize you're just a regular tiny person with no friends. So, so how do you get an avatar? Where do you find people to play with? And what are those dudes doing over in the corner? Oh, oh god. Oh no! Ah! Step 1. Finding your own avatar, or using free ones. The ultimate goal of VRChat is obviously to be represented as your very own persona, or at least be able to run around as beautiful animals with all of your friends. There's a lot of different ways you can achieve this, so let's take a look into public avatars, private avatars, and last but not least, very custom and private avatars. Public avatars. If you travel around the worlds of VRChat, you will find and stumble upon public avatars. These are avatars you can just click on, change to avatar, favorite it, and then boom, you can play as that avatar whenever you want. 
these are not customizable, it's just assets to maybe, you know, get you into the feel of the game or get you into the feel of an avatar. They can usually be found in public worlds, like the Kanga world, or like this snow mountain who can be found on the Mirror's Edge map by Hayu, but where you can probably find the most furry avatars is by visiting the world fur hub and taking a look around. Okay, but how do I visit fur hub? I'm gonna get to the part of entering and joining worlds uh, later in the video. Because the last way you can get your hands on a public avatar is by clicking on someone already using one. You choose copy avatar and you will now have it yourself. Please note that this does not work if the other user has clicked this setting right here. So yeah. Private avatars and how to get your own persona into the game. Private customized avatars is what you will see most people be using, as it is the easiest way to get your persona into the game. To start off with, you need an avatar base. Avatar bases are almost like a species. You have the hubkins, you have the dares, you have the bunny, you have this raccoon which is the one I'm using. The way you usually find this is by paying for it on a website like foofy.daravatar.com or you might need to get in contact with a creator of one to get access to the files. When you see someone using an avatar you've never seen before you can probably walk up to them and ask gently where they found it. Hello mechanical creature. Where Where is your avatar from? My avatar? I, I made it. You made it? It's a digigill. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Where can we find this avatar? Killavatars.com Very amazing. Hello, tiny burb. Where where can we find Hello. you? There's a lot of public versions of this uh, model, I guess, that you can customize yourself. Where did you find this beautiful creature? I found it on the Avali Discord. It's um, right in there as a downloadable version. You can uh, customize it yourself. There's also a uh, like paintable file in there, so it's pretty nice. Very cool. So yeah, this is how you find avatars in the world of VR. It's just to ask people who have an avatar and they will probably give you an answer. Again, some avatar bases you have to pay for, some avatar bases are free. I will say though, the avatar bases are a ton of work to make, so I would highly recommend paying up as they are largely made by your fellow furry creators. I've linked a bunch of different people in the description below if you wanna check it out. After you have gotten the rights to use an avatar base, you gotta paint your fursona's colors onto it. This can be done by yourself in a program like Substance Painter, but you can also find someone else and pay them to do it for you. I've put some links and further info in the description below. After you've gotten your avatar, you upload it to VRChat from inside your Unity Engine. This is the only way you'll be able to get your own avatar inside the game, as there's no easy avatar creation within the game itself. So, that was everything about private avatars. Let's jump over to custom avatars. For the really crazy people out there, you can also get your very own 3D model and avatar, allowed to use by nobody else. This is like getting your very own fursuit, and it will cost you a lot of money as well, because it's quite a lot of work to do for anyone. It's not really a necessary thing to have at all, I certainly don't have it myself, but I'm just mentioning it there because it is an option. So, you know, if, if you're really that crazy, you can go for it. Most people don't have a unique avatar just for themselves though. The majority buy or download an avatar base, then change the colors to match their persona as mentioned earlier. New avatar bases are being made all the time, sometimes normal animals, sometimes species from games, or even new custom species altogether. So going for a completely custom avatar is only something I would recommend if you have a very high budget. Step 2. Worlds and how to explore them. Finding and joining different worlds to explore together with friends is actually quite easy. You just click on the world selection screen and you search for whatever world you want to explore. Some good examples might be Virtual Furrens or the Kanga world or there's there's a lot of beautiful worlds out there so just go on a beautiful adventure, Oh yeah. And as you can see right here there are public instances of the worlds and private instances of the worlds. So let's talk about that in step 3, how to find people to play with. VR chat, especially furry VR is a friend based game. What I mean by that is that to play the game you kinda need friends to play the game with. It's almost like a convention, sure you can go there alone but if you don't have any plans on actually initiating or starting conversations with people it it might end up being a lonely experience. In VR chat, as you get friends, you suddenly get a much wider scope for what you can do, because you can join in on your friends and jump into the world, you can invite friends to your world, and then friends of friends can join in so you can have new people to talk with, and this is how servers, or instances as they're called in VR chat, usually gets filled. But let's talk about how you can find new people to talk with if you are entirely new to the game. The first thing you can do is join in on a public instance of a furry world, which can, if you are lucky, be a very nice way to find new people to talk with. This way you can usually find a bunch of other furries in addition to the occasional anime avatar. Public worlds can often turn into a huge mess though, and there's a reason most people who play VR chat just wanna hang together in private worlds. Another way you can find people who play VR is by finding already existing online communities. There are many different communities out there, like the Longboy community, the Valley community, the... the Hobkins? I don't know, there's, there's a lot of them, and I don't really know how to find them, but 
they're out there somewhere. While you still have to face any fear you may have of talking to other people, you may find that socializing in VR may feel a little bit easier to do, as it gives you a place where you can practice in a safer way. If you start feeling uncomfortable or anxious, you can always leave and try again the next day. It gives you a lot of room to experiment and just try to be yourself. It can also really help to have friends virtually by your side to introduce you to other people that they already know. It's a very great way to widen your scope of people you talk with. So, that pretty much covers the basics of furry VR. As you can tell, there are plenty of ways to enjoy virtual reality, and as you're likely never gonna go to a convention the next few months, or maybe years, you might as well buy a VR headset. VR chat on desktop mode is like a regular game, but with almost no gameplay. But in virtual reality, it's a completely different story. You become your persona. You see that as your reflection in the mirror, which is a Amazing. Being in VR chat in virtual reality is not like playing a game. It's almost like being at a friend's house or walking down the street or attending a convention. It is a place and your memories of it are like memories of being in a place as well. So. That is my selling point for virtual reality. I've personally really enjoyed it way more than I've ever enjoyed any furry convention. I've just found VR to be a way better way to express myself in the furry way. Okay, that was everything for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great day, you beautiful creatures. Okay, bye bye. Rarth.